to the creepy music. Hello and welcome to The Witching Hour, where a disturbed author tortures another disturbing author from Raventail Publishing about how they torture their readers. My name is Greg Stumbo, author, author of the Generation Z series, among other things. My guest today is Radar DeBoard, author of Alter from Space. And joining us today to talk about Radar is Johnny Tremel from the Raventail Tormented Readers Group on Facebook. So, Radar, let's cut to the chase, man. Tell me how it ends. Get me to the end of the book. I ain't got time. <laughs> All righty. How- let's just say some people got to escape a ship pretty quickly. And at the end of the, the whole deal, there's a big boss fight. Oh, <laughs> love that. Oh, yeah. It sets it up pretty well about a chapter or two beforehand. And so you get to the end and you know it's coming. <laughs> now that is a great ending. Okay. That's that's going to be worth getting through the book. I love a big boss fight. <laughs> that's a, I had a friend read it and he was like, dude, this is just uh, the last boss in a video game. And I went, oops. Oh, well, <laughs> it's, it's in there. <laughs> Well, you you and I have talked before, so I know you've got a propensity for just doing the most random stuff and 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 making it work so beautifully. It's it's. Oh, well, so I got I got no doubts about a, a big boss video game ending there. <laughs> so all right, so now we know you know how it's going to wrap up. What's your favorite part of the book? Um, so Greg, we talked about this a little a little bit ago last time we talked. Um, so basically, I guess to kind of give it some background, uh, there's a few members of the of the crew that are on board the SS Revelation. Um, they split apart. And so this part of the crew is searching through like this whole medical room area, this big, vast medical space. Um, and they get near the end of it and they, they hear some moaning and some groaning and they're like, oh, shit, someone's still alive. <laughs> um, and they're like, we, we got to save them. So they, they open this big metal door to this huge room and lo and behold, it's a giant ball of flesh <laughs> that's just made of human faces and like limbs, like arms and legs, and it's just moaning. And, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, so they're going, oh, well, shit, this can't get any worse. And then the ball starts rolling. <laughs> I think that's my favorite part in that I wrote for the book. I just love the idea of some guys having to escape from a giant rolling ball of flesh, Indiana Jones style. Yeah, that's, you know, down these narrow corridors and, <laughs> you know, and I just, I just picture the face every time it comes to the floor, like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> just wait. No. <laughs> As it rolls on. <laughs> All right. Now, now I gotta, I gotta ask you this. Do the voices in your head ever fall out in public? Only on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> only when i drink too much coffee which all thankfully right. is not not often so <laughs> all right all right so uh let's move on to uh tropes do you love all them right. or hate them mm, tropes you know i i feel like you gotta have a few tropes you know you gotta strike the right balance so i guess love them as long as you know you don't use too many yeah yeah i you know it, it people kind of expect them yeah know? right if you, if you go in to see an action movie, you know, you, you really kind of want to see somebody dangling by their fingertips and being in a high speed car chase, you know, that's, you know, and if you don't see those things, you're a little disappointed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And like, you know, with horror, someone, they ha- you have to expect someone to make a dumb move, you know? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, the door's wide open. I'm going upstairs to hide in the closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, because if everybody did the smart thing, you know, there, there would be no book. It would just be a police report, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't sell any copies then. <laughs> no, no, no. Have you ever read one of those things? I mean, that is some of the worst writing on the planet. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I imagine. <laughs> those who have it doesn't matter already. whether they got to sit there and hand write that stuff. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, I would say I would say I guess love tropes more than anything because you got to have at least five or six sprinkled in there, you know. There we go. Yeah, little toppings. Okay, so who or what is your biggest influence? Oof, I would have to say probably John Carpenter because I just kind of grew up watching Ooh. his movies and he's just like my guy. I love me some John Carpenter. 
it doesn't even have to be his horror movies, you know, uh, what's the Escape from New York's great. Um, I guess They Live's kind of a kind of a horror movie, but not really. Just his yeah. sort of like style, the action and how he writes the dialogue. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'll on well, and obviously I uh, <laughs> um, the altar from space got a little bit of help from the thing uh in wow. the creature department so <laughs> yeah and it's the thing is just so good too because i mean it's, it's 40 years old right yeah it's 40 yeah. years old and it's still the special effects still hold up yeah i mean the whole the whole uh the whole scene where they uh where that guy like passes out on the table and they're they're using the defibrillator and his head like rips off into like a spider thing ah oh, still yeah. one of the best scenes ever <laughs> oh man i could watch that over and over all right, now. that still gives me nightmares for sure. <laughs> the spider head. I just love how uh, I just love the I forgot the character's name, but the one character just turning, and that's that's how I would react if him just going, "You got to be fucking kidding me!" <laughs> that spider head comes. It's like, yeah, what what are you doing here? You know, <laughs> that's it. I'm done. I'm done. There's nothing else. <laughs> that's it. I'm out. All right. So two questions, really quick: clotter or pantser? I do not know. And there are just some some things in the the whole, like the whole writing community that I just don't understand. Like I, I think you were in this conversation on Twitter where I was talking about gothic horror, mm -hmm. and I I still don't know what it is, even though someone described it to me as a Scooby Doo episode. I still <laughs> I still can't understand it, and, and that's the thing with a, a plotter versus pantser. I just I cannot wrap my head around it. Oh, it's, at it's, all. it's really easy. Um, a plotter will, will build an outline so they okay. know what they're doing. A pantser has no outline, just sits down and throws it onto the page. Oh, kind of like by the seat of their paint. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I'm learning stuff. That's why I was on the, that's why I came on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say, I guess plotter then. It's not like a great, like sort of plot outline, but I write something down. Yeah. So you got, yeah. And that's, it, that gives you the idea, but you leave yourself lots of freedom to to slide stuff around and see what happens. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. normally my, my outlines are like, for each chapter, I'll write like two sentences. And and I'm using the word sentence liberally. Yeah. Because it it's like main character, run, bad stuff. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that, that our listeners are gonna agree with me when, when I say, I'm glad you go back and flesh that out. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, eventually. <laughs> All right, the next one, author or writer? See, I, I feel like they're interchangeable. I don't really know if there's any difference. It's just what you want to call yourself. I like writer more than author, but eh, to each their own, you know? Yep. All right. Let's get back to an easy question. Do you prefer good versus evil or morally gray? Ooh, I feel, I feel like more towards the morally gray sort of thing. Like I, I kind of, and I kind of like it when things are not explained for the characters, really, you know, for their motives, like a hundred percent fleshed out. They're just kind of there. So yeah. Halloween is a fantastic example of like, you know, with Michael Myers, he just shows up and there's like not really any explanation for why he's doing what he does. He just does it. And yeah. I think that makes it so much creepier than them going like what they did later on. And they're like, he's got to kill all his family. And, but first he makes a baby with his sister and stuff like that. It's, yeah. it gets really weird later on in the series. <laughs> so I like, I, I like it not being explained. And I like that moral gray area. Cause that's more of what life is like, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah. And that's, that's how people actually are. You don't, you know, you, you never really get all the answers. Yeah. You know, if, sure. I'm in a giant ball of flesh, but Hey, I could become an accountant. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't you don't know me. You don't you don't know what my mother put me through. <laughs> I'm a strong, resilient, independent face. Yeah, <laughs> I only need five or twelve arms. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of mystery goes a long way. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, got like kind of what they did with Jaws. Granted, the shark kind of kept malfunctioning, but you hardly ever see the shark. It's all yeah. that mystery that builds up, and it's just the best way to do it, really. All right. What is now. that? What is that style called? Is it? show don't tell or is it tell don't show oh well yeah show don't tell show don't tell okay there we go now I'm, I'm really curious to the answer of this one i think i know the answer do you laugh when you're killing off characters 
It depends on the character, but I, I do openly chuckle a good, <laughs> a good half of the time. I, I had a feeling. <laughs> like, especially if it's pretty gruesome, I'm like going, <laughs> he's getting his legs ripped off. <laughs> Did that exact same thing when I wrote Crossover. It was, <laughs> I was actually getting a little concerned for myself. <laughs> it's in my queue, by the way. I'm going to, it's in my line of things to read. So just you wait. All right. Well, that's, you know, I'm, I, I, I've gotten to excel at waiting. So I'm, I'm doing good. <laughs> it's one of All the right. best parts of being a writer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything else that I did, it was like, you know, you, you, you do all the, you do this thing and you build it up and you build it up. And then, it, you know, and then finally, you know, the time comes and that's when everything starts, you know, then you start, you know, booking yeah. shows and, you know, going on tour and, and, and stuff like that with writing. It's like, everything's done beforehand. And then the big day comes and it's release day and you just sit <laughs> <laughs> and you obsess over Amazon numbers that don't make any difference whatsoever going, Oh my God, did it change? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, the sales rank is just the weirdest thing in the world. It kind of reminds me of when you when you sign up for like a club membership and they're like, all right, you've gotten 20 points for joining. And they just don't explain the point system. That's how I feel about Amazon sales rank. It's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm 500,000. Is that good? Is that bad? I'm still right. trying to get past the idea of two amputated legs dangling off of a flesh ball like Humpty Dumpty or something. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's back 20 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, dude, you to, to be fair, this is the first time he's heard about that giant ball of flesh. We've got you, we've gotten to laugh about it quite a bit. So he's that is true. Yeah, he's he's in the middle of trauma right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you know what this sound is? That's uh -oh. the grab bag of doom. So we're gonna find <laughs> out what one of our readers. Pat wants to know, and this is, this is, I mean, this is not personal. They just send in these weird questions that they want to, to ask the authors. And this is the one that you got. All right. Okay. So Sonny in Whiteville, North Carolina wants to know, are the characters based on people you know? Um, actually, no. They're just, no. yeah, I just make them up for the, the story and I kind of picture out their personalities and just go with it. Now, now um, you're saying that because you know this is being recorded and, and they, there's a chance they might see it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Guess what, Sonny? You're in the next book. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get for asking that question. No, I, I, really, I really don't. Like, uh, it's, that's kind of lucky, I guess, that I don't have to base it off people I know in real life. I don't know, though. Maybe someone shouldn't tick me off because that maybe might end up getting eaten by a giant ball of flesh. Uh, that, that's oh they could just be the next ball of flesh oh there you go then then you could bandy them about and you know kick them around and you know uh you know every, every time they say a crossword to you you know there's a whole chapter of you know that poor ball of flesh falling <laughs> off of cliffs and <laughs> <laughs> the giant ball of flesh which will henceforth be known as susan <laughs> <laughs> all right now now a more serious question do you ever go so dark in your writing that you need to stop just for your own mental health Hmm, I don't think I've ever made it to that point yet. <laughs> so the dot, dot, dot. But I feel like eventually it's going to get there where I'm like, whoa, that's a little too much. Yeah. What is wrong with me? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> All right. Now, um, this, is, this is more of a question for me. Do you put Easter eggs in your books? Uh, I do not. But then again, I don't. I don't have too many books, so it's hard to put Easter eggs in them. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Well, then I'm not going to go hunting for eggs. I'll just sit back and enjoy the ride. How there you that? go. <laughs> um, so uh, you've got uh, Altered from Space, and that's out, and, and that's, that's doing pretty good right now. Um, what else do you got coming up for Raventail? Um, so I think at the, yeah, it was at the end of May, the sequel to it, As the Artifacts Stir, was released. Yeah. And that that's also um, both of them are available in paperback or ebook. So that's great. I'm working on the third one right now. So and that's coming along swimmingly. Uh, <laughs> now is this going to be an ongoing series or are you doing a trilogy or or what are what are your plans for it? I I'm thinking about ongoing series that you know because where I'm going with the third one, I'm like, oh, I might need a couple more here. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> 
Raventel doesn't know yet, but <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they will, will after they listen. <laughs> yeah, they will after they listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess I'll also, um, I'm I'm part of like the uh, creature feature novels too with Raventel. So um, I've signed on for three of those. So those will be coming out eventually. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. I love my creatures. What else can I say? <laughs> All right. Well, um, now we've gotten this far into the show. And uh, so when, when our listeners stick around this long, I like to give them a little bonus. Um, so, you know, give me some spoilers from the books. Something that you can actually give to just the just the listeners. Nothing, you know, nothing that's going to destroy anything, but give them a leg up on on other readers who uh, who haven't tuned in. Right. Well, I, I guess because I had my my sister read the sequel as the artifact stir, and she specifically talked about this one scene. I'll bring it up. So in the first book, there's a bad guy who likes to take people's eyes. Ooh, a L- little bit of eye <laughs> gouging. <laughs> um, and so. I, I will let all the readers who have li- listened this far know that in the second book, there is some definite eye gouging, at least in one scene. <laughs> and it's a little bit more gruesome in detail than oh, in the first it. one. Yeah, I so it gives <laughs> a new meaning to sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Sign um, this man right here. <laughs> so so how, how is Raventail going to feel about, you know, them having to put out a braille version of the book now too. <laughs> hey, more versions, more sales, right? <laughs> yes, yes. We got a wider audience now. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Jeez. All right, all right. I think that is about everything that I've got for you. Did you uh, did you have any questions you wanted to throw at me sideways? Actually, I do have a random question for you. And I guess for you too, John, if you want to answer after Greg, um, okay. out of all of like all horror media, if you could be one monster, what would you be? Ooh, one monster. Ooh. That's right. Oh man, no. <laughs> that's a tough one. You know what? You know what? As, as, as unimaginative as it is, I think I would actually have to go with vampire. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, they live forever. So I've got forever to sort stuff out. And I mean, they're usually styling. You know, and, right. and you know, they they own the nightclubs. They got the big house. You know, I, and they've had you know hundreds of years. Well, I'd probably be starting from scratch, so it would take me a couple hundred years to get up to that level. But I'd have a couple hundred years to build up a big pile of money, so I could you know pretty much you know not exactly quite live on for eternity pretty comfortably. Dang, yeah, I guess you're right. They they really do have it the best out of all the monsters. You know, it's it's pretty funny because I was watching some movie the other day with like a bunch of rich vampires and I was sitting there just going kind of just crossed about it because I'm like, I'm tired of all these hundred year old vampires who who are well off. I want a destitute vampire, like someone who invested in the stock market incorrectly or something. (laughs) I want a hobo vampire. Hobo vampire. (laughs) I'd have to say probably shapeshifter because then you could kind of be whatever you know if i want to fly away at night as an owl or uh you know run up a mountain as a goat i don't know (laughs) (laughs) so that's two very weird examples but uh, (laughs) of all the things you could shape shift (laughs) an owl and a goat you don't need anything else baby (laughs) (laughs) that's great I'd be afraid of being an owl, man. It, 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 swallowing down mice whole is just, and, and then oh. having to cough all that back. I, uh, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> I feel like I'd shape shift into an octopus, you know? I feel like they got it pretty well off. They do. They do. But you got to watch. They're cannibals, man. Oh, well. They, <laughs> I kind of like calamari, so. Yeah. They're kind of like a shape shifter already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Guess, sure. guess you're right. Yeah, because they can also, what, they can change color too, right? Yeah. And a little bit of pattern. You know, like uh, texture. <laughs> man. Oh, yeah, they're creepy. An octopus. <laughs> but man, you, I, was, I was doing some research on those things, and, and I was just asking myself, these things have been around, you know, for millions of years, and th- their bodies are designed, they've got like six times the brain-building chromosomes that we've got. Um, well, they're, they're smart as heck. They're capable of just about anything. Uh, why are we, why were, why did we not evolve into an octopus society? You know, (laughs) (laughs) 
Hey, I, I'm up for that. That'd be more interesting if you're like trying to plug in electronics underwater. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like the idea of eating my own limbs when I get stressed out. Well, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. But, you know, that's and well, radar's probably going to put that in his next book. So don't look, I'm not writing anything. <laughs> <clears throat> Character named Johnny Eats Limbs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's going to about wrap us up for our time. Uh, I want to thank you all once again for joining us as we uh, torture a Raventail author solely for your amusement. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank Johnny Tremel for coming in from the uh, Raventail Tormented, Reader, uh, torture, Tormented Readers Group from Facebook. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, Thanks for having me. Radar, real quick, uh, tell everybody where they can find your stuff, man. Yeah, so you can find me. Uh, you can find my stuff on my Amazon page. Uh, just type in Radar to Board on Amazon. I should pop up. And then uh, I'm on Twitter under Radar Steel. And Steel is spilled in. I'm going to steal something. I haven't. I don't have great grammar. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so those, those are my main key points. Uh, that's where you can find me, though. All right. Excellent. And if you're hunting me down, you all probably already know, you can just type in Greg Stumbo into Amazon. Find me there at Gen Z Book on Twitter. Um, you can hunt me down on Facebook under my name. The show has been produced through Raventail Pro uh, Publishing. Our show's producer is Trent Aki. And we've had contributions from Karen Hall and Patrick Green. This is Greg Stumbo signing off, and I will see you all the next time I want to torment an author from Raventail. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Thanks for having me, Greg.